Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Uh, I feel delightful that today I'll be able to present my research on the third Kuala Lumpur International Conference on Education, Economics and Technology 2021 CLISAT. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is No Suraya Muhammad Saudi. I'm from National Defense University of Malaysia, NDUM. So today I would like to present uh, the topic of my research, which is impact of COVID-19 outbreak and lockdown measures on urban agriculture and food security. Um, this research is for the post-COVID-19 special research grant of UPNM uh, with the collaboration with the KPT, Kementerian Pendidikan Tinggi. So the co-researcher for this um, research is Colonel Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Nur bin Yahya, me, myself, and Professor Mabia Dr. Baharun bin Abdul Hamid from INSAF, Professor Dr. Muzaffar Shah bin Habubua from um, University of Putra, Malaysia. So we also have a research assistant, which is Muhammad Amiru Aslan from UPNN. So I will start my presentation with the outlines. I will start with the background and go to research scope and next to methodology, finding, conclusion, and significance of the study. The background, uh, the recent extension of the Movement Control Order MCO may be effective in containing the spread of the pandemic, but it is expected to have a devastating impact on food security. While some countries have been successful in containing the spread of the pandemic, new information on the nature of the virus is constantly being released. Therefore, the overall impact is still unpredictable, although lockdown efforts seem to have reduced infection rates substantially. In response to these challenges, this study proposed the implementation of urban farming towards a sustainable economy, establishing food security, and creating the ability for the generation of household income for the B40 group. In the next decade, there will will only become more populous, but as income increase all over the world, nation become richer. It is projected that the world population will reach more than 9 million by 2015. Economies have recognized the important role played by the agriculture sector to feed the nation's population. Thus, daunting task for the agriculture sector is to produce the needed foods, feed, fiber and biofuel for the growing population. Furthermore, it is expected that all this growth occur in the developing country with the biggest increase in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, FAO reported that 34% increase in the world population in 2015 to more than 9 million require a 70% increase in the total food production. So this research or uh, more uh, focuses on the how much as, uh, we want to implement the uh, urban farming to feed the nations uh, in the context of food security. So this is the framework of my research. Uh, it is clearly stated here that uh, these ideas of urban farming is want to provide uh, the uh, uh, to provide a good supply chain for foods. All right. So uh, this study will uh, uh, will investigate the economic impact, social impacts on the food securities uh, in Malaysia. So they, this is my literature reviews, all right? The, lock, the lockdown to contain the coronavirus outbreak has been hurting the supply of labor and disrupting supply chain in the agriculture industry. Yeah, um, this is agreeable uh, because uh, clearly that the agriculture sector in Malaysia must play a very important role in securing foods in order to feed the growing and affluent population in the next decade to come. 
However, agriculture sector in Malaysia only contribute about 7% of the total GDP in 2019. So these uh, have been 2020 uh, also saying the same thing that uh, the coronavirus outbreak has been hurting the supply of labor and disrupting supply chain in the agriculture sector. Um, recognizing that the global demand for food is expected to increase rapidly with growing population and rising affluence, Malaysia has every reason to step up its food security. Under the ETP, ETP is the Economic Transformation Program, the agriculture sector has been identified as one of the 11 sectors where growth will be given priority and focus. According to Clinton, while urban agriculture is not a viable solution to provide for all foods need of urban residents, um, shifting some foods production within the cities can help reduce pressure on current agriculture land and increase the access and availability of health food while also providing other benefits to the urban landscape. So um, this idea of urban farming is not, uh, we, this is more on social economic where you want to provide food for all the needs for urban residents. And at the same time, we try to uh, give a, uh, good supply chains uh, within the community is yes, uh, is not purposely for the country. I mean, like um, it's not really a focus on GDP, gross domestic product. But this urban farming, the ideas of community farming, is more on to produce supply to maintain uh, food production within cities. An unusual and temporary increase in demand during MCO tends to have inflationary effects. Price of healthy food may rise and this challenge will change the dietary pattern of consumer. So um, the problem is of COVID-19 as when you have a, a, a movement control order, uh, the demand will reduce, we will having a demand shock or supply shock. So uh, in relation to this, uh, this study will investigate how much is the, uh, the implementation of uh, urban farming can help this group to uh, generating income uh, during this pandemic or MCO. So this is the research area. We focus area uh, on Semeni, Granang and Kajang. This is all uh, Situated uh, near uh, to each other, and this is uh, this uh, area is under the district of Daerah uh, Langat. The research objective uh, for this uh, study is to study the implementation of urban agriculture <clears throat> towards a stable economy to determine the impact of the implementation of urban agriculture on the community, which is uh, individual B40 to formulate policy to increase household income for the underprivileged in the city that can ultimately lead to stable economic development and long-term economic growth in Malaysia. So this is the three objectives of the study. So uh, <clears throat> findings on the impact of the implementation of urban farming, we noticed that uh, uh, the the generic income variable is the most significant, while the reduced greenhouse effect variable is significant. And the least one is the household food supply variable is the least significant. The study um, managed to uh, conclude that uh, this urban farming provide more uh, income support for B40 group because during the MCO, a lot of people lost of job and then uh, the income decreases because there are less activities in the uh, firm. So, uh, but most of them uh, reported that they lost their job and by selling the urban, uh, uh, the, the, the farming, the, the productions, they manage to generate some income. It's not uh, so much income uh, like the previous one, but at least they can get, uh, can sustain uh, their uh, daily uh, requirements, daily expenses uh, by selling these vegetables and the uh, crop. 
okay uh while we can see here that the least significant is uh, the household food supply uh, since uh, this study was conducted uh, during the earlier stage of uh, MCO and uh, so um, uh, there's a short term impact by the way uh, we can see that uh, the contribution to, to food supply is not much as generating income because I believe that the food supply is still manageable uh, still at acceptable rate so um, under this study, we also uh, uh, investigate the impact of vegetable price uh, due to this lockdown. So we uh, we went through all these independent variables. We measured uh, six measurements uh, of uh, MCO, the lockdown, which is domestic travel, restriction on gathering, international travel, cancelled public events, school closure and stay at home. This is all the MCO um, the, the MCO lockdown measurements that are uh, experienced by most of the countries. So because of that they we had the world facing a very uh, bad economic uh, situation. Uh, it's not because of the COVID-19 itself but because of the lockdown. So from this measurement uh, we managed to see the impact uh, uh, from the uh, five types of vegetables. Uh, generally, we observed that in all the estimated equation uh, for all six lockdown measure and for all five vegetable price are co-integrated. Nevertheless, the impact of COVID-19 new cases of vegetable price are not uniform in terms of significant and the sign. And similarly, the impact of lockdown vary with the type of lockdown measure in both significance and sign. For example, the result for Bringer price indicate that COVID-19 confirmed new cases has negative impact on the price of Bringer when the domestic travel, schools closure and stay at home requirement were used as the lockdown measure. However, the lockdown measure restriction in international travel is significant and show negative effect on the brinjal price. This result implies that during COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown, the price of brinjal has decreased, probably due to the decrease in consumption. However, with lower price of brinjal, people with stable income will able, still able to purchase brinjal for consumption. Similarly, uh, similarly, the number of COVID-19 new cases and lockdown impacted negatively on the price of cabbage and lady fingers. Okay, lower price of cabbage and lady finger during the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown will not deny people to access, which is a this vegetable as with their available income. Since this uh, carry, uh, vegetable is not uh, too expensive, still within their, uh, their capability and still, uh, can be uh, sell at during the pandemic time. Okay, if you can see here, the the list of uh, vegetable is uh, very at uh, the one of the top uh, five uh, demand. Okay, and the highest supply according to uh, pharma data. This study proposed the urban agriculture on establishing uh, food security and creating the ability for the generation of household income for B40 group. The empirical finding on the correlation between general income household food supply and greenhouse disputed a strong connection of urban agriculture to generate income for B40 group. The econometric analysis indicated not all vegetables react uniformly positively with lockdown measure. The positive impact of both COVID-19 and lockdown imply that household will purchase less of this vegetable due to increased price. With less of reduced income and higher prices, people will not be able to consume this type of vegetables. Thus, higher food price deny people access to food security. Nevertheless, since um, vegetables are substitutable, the population will be able to consume on some other vegetables that are cheaper and affordable with their present income. 
So uh, uh, we can uh, conclude uh, that uh, this implementation of urban farming really helped the B40 group uh, to increase their income and at the same time uh, to um, uh, improve the food security supply chains. And at the same time, we managed to explore how much this um, uh, vegetable price impact with the um, lockdown measurements by the uh, stringence index. Okay, uh, so the policy recommendation, new knowledge for this uh, research is the involvement from the stakeholder on the implementation of urban farming is vital to ensure the sustainability of urban agriculture in Malaysia. Considering that urban agriculture is still an infant industry, the government should allocate more budget allocation on developing the knowledge, facilities and funding to facilitate urban agriculture farming as it is proven that this industry is potentially capable delivering a suite of environmental, economic, food security, and social benefit, especially to B40 group. Without a complicated distribution network, farmers are more connected to their market and able to adapt quickly to demand and maximizing profits. These um, urban farming uh, provide benefits to the community by supplying fresh perishable products. Rural areas supply more bulky and easier to store products. Productivity in agriculture by reducing the area of arable land, especially in regions of high population density, influence environmental issues and reducing the area of arable land, which is also we can say that vacant land. So, um, Contribution is developing uh, the urban agriculture sector, improving social welfare and educational places, and utilizing unused land in urban communities. If you can see that this study uh, explore uh, investigate uh, the impacts of the implementation of uh, the feedback and the impact of uh, the implementation of urban farming in the uh, uh, Langat district. So uh, we can see that there's a lot of vacant land area lands uh, uh, in this uh, district. So uh, utilizing unused land in urban communities because there's many opportunities to rebuild vacant land to enhance its ecological and social value to harness this potential, especially those related to planning and design. Raise the public value of urban vacant land is crucial for any effort to identify alternative strategy to optimize the use of this space for short-term and long-term use to support the urban environment and economic growth. So um, since uh, Malaysia's uh, reported a low GDPs in agricultures, so uh, we hope that uh, perhaps this urban agriculture can promote agriculture sector in place, increase social well-being and place for education, fully utilize the unused land in the urban community. So this is the framework um, where is the urban farming, uh, the objective, the aim of urban farming is to, to, to provide a food security, to provide a clean environment and to help the socio-economic uh, in terms of uh, getting the uh, income for the household, especially for B40 group. Thank you. Uh, that's all for today. I hope everybody can benefit from my research. Uh, thank you and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.